You are at the end of the rant rainbow, where I rant about whatever my patrons wanted me to rant about like a year ago. Today, we've got one for Branko Bergson. It says, rant about the Pokemon parody episode of South Park Chin Pokemon. How well does it function as a satire, especially coming from two non-fans, witnessing its first rise to popularity from the outside? Well, I was a huge fan of Pokemon back in the 90s. I saw this episode, I don't think while Pokemon was relevant, but like a little while later. Um, <clears throat> and... There's a lot of stuff that's really fun about it. I mean, um, all the speaking Japanese, the general idea that Japanese people would come to America and use the idea that Americans have a giant penis to convince them to go along with whatever they're doing. Like, oh, you, you Americans have such a very big penis. We have such small penis here in Japan. Um, I feel like that would work. And it totally scans as both what uh, what the Japanese businessmen would do and what the Americans would buy into. Uh, so that part's fucking hilarious. The presentation of Chin Pokemon itself, like, broadly in a thematic sense, the idea of it being this huge fad that swept through the kids in America is uh, is accurate. And the, the fact that it's like... I mean, this pits it as being Japanese propaganda to take down the American government on top of being like this capitalistic frenzy thing. The capitalistic frenzy element of it is absolutely accurate. The idea of it, you know, trying to brainwash American children to take down the government. Um, well, the, the weird part about it is that they're attacking the capitalist American government, which is odd coming from Japan. Um, but, you know, maybe it's like someone who, some, some, like uh, someone who was mad about World War II, Japanese conservative person who wants to like, you know, get revenge was, was meant to be leading the charge. That would make as much sense as anything, I guess. But yeah, like the, um, the idea of it being just this thing that everybody kind of moved past once their parents got into it. Like <clears throat> for me, I got in, like Pokemon came out when I was in second grade, I think, like um, and I was massively into it throughout second grade, and everybody was. It was like everybody had all the cards, everybody was playing the games, all that shit. And then when I went into third grade, suddenly no one was playing it anymore except for me. So for the next three years, like, I was still obsessed with Pokemon, and and other kids weren't. And I got singled out and bullied for being into it um, in the way that Kyle, you know, is for constantly being behind the trends throughout the episode so i connect with that element and the funny thing about it is like i wanted my mom to be into pokemon like my stance on anything i liked growing up was i want everybody around me to be into it because i want to be able to talk about the stuff i like um so you know i it would have gotten or it did get me even deeper in to have my mom get into pokemon to some degree as well um the actual like way that the dialogue of the anime Chin Pokemon is portrayed in the show is more like a broad anime parody. Pokemon is itself not nearly as like autistic as this portrays anime as being, where like there's not tons of over explaining necessarily. It's more like quick and fun. There is a lot of ah and ah, you know, so that part is accurate. But like when when like they start talking about the creatures and stuff and just like the the complete inaneness of the story there are a lot of people who seem to view pokemon as like a very empty or vapid kind of story because it doesn't have like strong thematic undercurrents or like much drama in the narrative it's it is more of like a kind of comfy world building comedy show in my opinion i think it really works as just a fun comfy comedy show like so you know i would say that the the way it's portrayed in this is like it takes itself more seriously i guess and it's not to say that pokemon never has moments where like it's meant to be a little bit more dramatic and serious but like watching the show as an adult it never feels like it's pulling back from being a comedy to me um in a way that like you know maybe as a kid you might be more dramatically involved in moments that as an adult read as f deliberately funny you know um but uh Maybe that's also me being somebody who knows more about anime and, like, you know, watches it with a different eye than the average American viewer would be if they were watching the show at the time and just seeing, like, a bunch of weird creatures saying their own names and incomprehensible nonsense about them. Um, but Pokemon was, like, fairly educational as a cartoon. I always felt like I was learning shit about what, you know, does or doesn't conduct electricity and stuff like that. So, uh... 
Yeah, I think the Chim Pokemon designs in this are all absolutely terrible. You know, there's the one that's the obviously based on Pikachu, um, but like they're deliberately like as ugly as fucking possible. So um, the, all the designs get a one. How could you say that about Shoe? A shoe. It's literally a shoe. So I mean, it's a very well designed shoe. Yeah, that's true. It's a perfect shoe. Um, yeah, like on purpose, they're just supposed to be ridiculous. It would have been like it's funny because like everybody makes fun of Pokemon now for stuff like Clefki and all these like object Pokemon, but there were like literally just like ball of sludge Grimer or fucking you know a ball up a, a fake Pokeball in the form of Voltorb. Yes, I know that the idea is that it's supposed to be a mimic. I get it. But it's still just a Pokeball, you know. Um, so, anyway, that's my thoughts on Jim Pokemon.